I'm here with the people who have snow tires yeah. and um, and oh my goodness, it looks like the entire choir has snow tires. And um, we have a lovely congregation here today. I know some of you are at home keeping safe. We're so glad that you're with us. So welcome everybody. Um, do you, I'm wondering, have you ever had, you know, the Germans called an earworm, an earworm, a, a song that you just can't get rid of, it may not even be a song you like very much, it just keeps coming, then you start humming it, then you've forgotten it, the other person in your house is singing it, and it just has a life of its own. Sometimes um, I get an earworm, but it, it's, a, it's a, a little snippet of scripture that just keeps coming back to me through the week. And one of the reasons I'm encouraging people to, to read a bit every day is that, you know, when you accumulate, when you repeat, what happens is even what you don't remember remembering will often, God will bring that back to you at a moment you really need it. And oh dear, you know, you can't hum a song you've never learned, can you? And you can't remember a scripture you've never heard or read. So this week I've had an earworm scripture. It's from 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20. And this is what it says. For the kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. The kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. Can you say that with me? The kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. It means that there are days you will be genuinely surprised to find something good in yourself that you weren't expecting because of the kingdom of God. And there will be days that you will find that you are delightfully surprised that you stepped up for something. You said yes to something you would not normally have said yes to and no to something you would not normally have said no to because something has changed inside of you that is a different set of priorities. You're sh and, and I truly believe that one of the reasons for the great fall away from churches over the last generation is because there's talk in the church kitchen, talk in the parking lot, talk in the downstairs hall. There's lots of talk in the pulpit. But in the kingdom of God does not depend on talk. It depends on power. And in our scripture today, which if you missed it at home, it was the parable of the mustard seed. And you have to appreciate this tree keeps turning up in scripture. At the first book of the Bible, Genesis, we have in the center of the garden, there's the tree of knowledge. And also the tree of the knowledge of, of right, e good and evil, which means I get, to, I get to choose what's good and bad for myself if I eat the fruit. That was a big mistake. But there's a tree of life in the center. In the book of Revelation, in the, at the very end, in chapters 21 and 22, there's a tree which bears fruit, a different crop every single month on both sides of a river that runs through Main Street, just like Brampton, the New Jerusalem street, river through the Main Street. In our Psalm, Psalm 1 today, we hear about how the righteous are like a tree planted by water. In Ezekiel, we hear how God will plant a tree and God can make something flourish that would not have flourished. And today we hear the story of the mustard seed where Jesus says this tiny little seed will grow into a tree that is big enough that the birds of the air will find their nests there. And the life that is in a tiny seed is so subtle you might not notice it working. I mean, when you were kids, did you ever plant bean seeds? And you know, I, mine kept dying because I kept digging them up to see what they were doing. <laughs> because it can be so slow. And th but this is what it looks like when the life, when the power of the kingdom of God is not present. Um, I know a family who had two boys, they were brothers. And they did what brothers do a lot, which is, yeah, they fought. So they were having a big fight about the Xbox because somebody had turn had gone on too long and now it was the other one's turn and they'd gone to their mother and she said, you guys figure it out yourself. I'm not your referee. So long as there's no blood, you figure it out. 
And so they weren't satisfied with that answer. So they went to dad and said, dad, William's not giving me my turn. And um, dad says, dad is exasperated. He's, he's, he, it's not, he's not his first try refereeing. He says to the kids, look at you sit there, Kyle, you sit there, William, and just think about what Jesus would want you to do hoping for a good 30 seconds of peace. Well, he got seven seconds. And William gets up and says, I know, Kyle, Jesus wants Kyle to give me my, give me the Xbox. <laughs> now you think that's just kids? You know, years ago, I heard about a dust up at Holland Christian Homes about a parking spot. You know, I mean, there's, there's fierce competition for certain things. It was a prime parking spot in a really good location. It, somebody had been using it, and the board, I think, wanted to actually assign it to somebody who had accessibility issues. And it, you know, <laughs> good luck solving those things, because if you've been in that parking spot, it's yours because you've been using it. And um, I don't think there was blood, but it was fierce. And the trouble is with people is just that they act like people. <laughs> and everybody, you know, everybody wants what they want because they want it, right? Really. It's just people. And um, Jesus, it's Jesus who said, you know, Jesus knew that people were just people. People say, well, you know, I was at a church and those people didn't act much like Chris. I, I want to say, oh, for goodness sake, you go to a church, you're going to find people. And where you find people, they're just going to act like people. When you go to work, you're going to have people who just act like people. Your neighborhood, the people in your neighborhood, the trouble is when you let people in, they act like that. There was a church in Quebec that was absolutely perfect because a big legacy had been left to the presbytery on condition that they hold a service on the site where there was no building anymore once a year. No people, lots of money. So when Jesus, when Jesus said, the, Jesus said that the, the kingdom of God is a mustard seed, he's saying that there is a power that makes people more than the just people we are naturally by ourselves. He says, the kingdom of God, what is a kingdom? A kingdom means a ruling power. It says where, when Jesus talked of the place where, G, where God is actively ruling, when we're actively under God's governance, Jesus told the parable of a mustard seed, and he knew that he knew, and everybody listening to him knew, that mustard seeds do not grow up into trees. They don't. Doug and I lived on the prairies for eight years. We spent 10 summers there. Mustard seed grows to bushes that high with pretty yellow flowers. It's grown mostly for oil, but it's delicious on hot dogs. Jesus says that the kingdom of God, that in the kingdom of God, these little seeds have a superpower that is not related to their size and impression and, and, and the impression they make on you. You've all seen puffballs of dandelion seeds? <laughs> Come to my lawn later this summer. If you took a single seed and, and broke it off its little wing and smashed it against the church parking lot as hard as you could, how badly would it hurt the church parking lot? It would have no impact at all whatsoever because which is stronger, which is tougher, which is more solid? It's going to be the parking lot. Shush. But if you pave over that parking lot and there are a few dandelion seeds underneath that parking lot and there's a hairline crack and just a little bit of moisture gets through, can that dandelion seed break up your parking lot? Oh, yes, it will. Because which is going to break first, the dandelion or the pavement? You can, you can mow it down. You can break off the leaves. You can dig out as much of your root as you want to. And that thing is going to come back because it has the power of the life that God has put inside of it. And when Jesus told the parable of the mustard seed, he knew that everyone listening to him knew 
that mustard seeds do not grow into trees and birds of the nest, birds of the air do not nest in mustard trees. But there is a life force hidden in the kingdom of God that is like a seed that grows in hidden ways. It's not explosive growth. It's not dynamite. It is slow and steady and hidden in you. The Bible describes it by a number of different names. The Gospel of John calls the seed eternal life. Jesus' parable calls it the kingdom of God. The, book, uh, the Gospel of Luke Acts calls it the Holy Spirit of God. First Peter calls it an imperishable seed. Second Peter calls it receiving the divine nature. It's a little bit of something that is not us planted in us. It doesn't look impressive. It doesn't look powerful. It doesn't look strong. But Jesus said, if you have faith, Itty bitty faith, unimpressive faith, mustard seed faith, dandelion faith. You can say to this mountain, move, and it will move. You can say to this asphalt, break, and it will dissolve. How can that possibly be? Because 1 Corinthians 4, 20, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power. God as creator has the capacity to put a force into the tiniest, the weakest, the least consequential because with God, nothing is impossible. What kind of power is mustard seed power? What kind of power is dandelion seed power? When Jesus calls it the kingdom of God, he says that it is a ruling power. It takes charge, but not in the way an army takes charge. It's not the explosive power of dynamite that takes that mountain and blasts it into oblivion. It is a deeper power. It is a stronger power that takes time and it moves in hidden ways. The power of the kingdom of God is the power of a new life. And here's how to tell you have new life. Three ways. One is you grow in your ability to be the person you wish you were. Remember that, I think it was 90 song, Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again. You start to have some wins where you used to have all losses. You surprise yourself sometimes by being kind or generous under circumstances where that wouldn't have come naturally to you at some previous time. See where I'm going with this? It can be a long, slow process, but it's still growing. So first you grow into the ability, you're growing into the ability to be the person you wish you were and God sees you as being. The second is you can let go of bitterness. You know, bitterness, I got to say, it's just like, it's just people being people. Whoever got that Xbox, the other person was bitter, yeah? Whoever lost that parking spot, I can't remember who it was anymore. I probably knew at the time. They were probably not really happy, right? That's just people being people, really. Never be surprised when people are being people. And, you know, brothers. And you outgrow that. You don't outgrow it from being a seven-year-old to an adult. But you outgrow that when you, when you see that what Jesus has done for you is more real than what people have done to you. All a matter of proportion. 
And you can't see that with your natural eyes. You can't live that with your natural heart. And I know not everyone feels this way. I was, I was looking in the bulletin this morning. We have a, a still incomplete list of people in the building here here's the challenge it's the i call it the holland christian homes parking lot challenge it's so when there was when there was saint paul's meeting here and maybe a couple of groups right we had all this closet space and now we've got a bazillion groups and they all need storage so that we don't store everything all over the place and you know we're going to say gosh you've got all this room can we have it and they're going <laughs> to we're going to pray for a lot of mustard seed faith going on because you know what it's it's not evil it's just people you 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 don't have to know anything advanced to know that people are just going to be people yeah i mean don't we all have days when we're people just being people and that lets us be patient when other people are just being people because they're going to i don't have a crystal ball i don't know the principal characters but i know this is going to be true <laughs> and I'm laughing. Isn't that crazy? But uh, by the way, keep help us keep this list updated. Our records are way out of date. If you're part of a group that's meeting the church, you don't see it here. Add it. If okay, we, just just asking your help. Okay. So first way we know is um, is because is because we're growing in our ability to be the person that we wish we were we see changes in ourselves and we're pleasantly surprised often that huh i didn't used to be able to do that the second is that you can let go of bitterness and the third is um how can you tell you have this new life you grow in your feelings you know your heart just like the grinch your heart gets bigger and softer you grow in the personal knowledge that God loves you, God accepts you, God delights in you, even in your weaknesses, that it may be hidden and gradual changes. It may be hidden and gradual changes, but you know, But you're going, you are going to see something happening in you that surprises you in a positive way. And, you know, you can walk out of this room, you can walk out of your room where you are today, totally different than the way you came in this morning with just a seed. It may be hidden, it may be gradual change, but that's not the same as no change at all. Tim Keller, um, who I, I, I've used, used sometimes for a commentary, he says, why can we have a tree of life? It's because Jesus climbed the cross, the tree of death. It's the great transfer. Our weakness, our peopleness goes to him. His power comes to live in us. How much do you need? Just a little mustard seed. A dandelion seed worth will do it. You know, at some point, we say, I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. I don't really know what it means, but I want in. All you need to start. And he'll plant the seed. And look at you. You're here today getting it watered. Really? You're here today getting it watered. So let's let's pray and ask for a renewal of that mustard seed in us. Lord God, when you tell us that uh, that you are like not not just our heavenly father, but our Abba. Our, our daddy. I wonder if sometimes you don't find the same joy in us that a father finds in his kids, and you don't get as exasperated as a dad is when the kids are people. God, you know our hearts, and we know 
that you love us with a love that <laughs> you just can't reject us. We, you just keep coming back. And God, we ask you today for the capacity just to say yes to your invitation of a mustard seed. We, we don't know. I, after all these years, I still don't know what all is involved in having Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but I know that I want more. And I see so much of the good fruit of that mustard seed in other people's lives. And so, God, we ask for more of that today, that it will be your life in us, bearing fruit so that when we're with people who are just being people, you'll help us grow past that in love, in relinquishness, relinquishment of bitterness, and in the joy of growing year by year through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And just as an aside, you know what really impresses people in the city about St. Paul's Brampton is when we tell people that there are 12 Christian churches besides St. Paul's finding shelter in this building, they say, oh my God goodness what a church what a generous display of hospitality so i just want to say that you have a reputation a very good reputation that way in the city people people out there think that you're special and i think what they see mustard seed and what does a mustard seed do grows into a tree. And what does the tree do? Shelters the birds of the air. Isn't that amazing? By the way, your, 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 your newsletter has a really good name. It was, uh, whose idea was that? Okay, Jesus, but I know there were other hands in this. So uh, anyways, I just wanted to share that. I, I hear that often. When people hear that, they say, wow, what a church. <laughs>